excitement on the terraces begins to uh, mount as the drivers parade with their cars. And there they are, the drivers sitting on the side of their cars, waving to the crowd. And that's Graham Franz 216, who we spoke to a little earlier this evening. And on the outside of Graham, the defending world champion Stuart Smith, and this is what he had to say about his chances earlier on. Stories that you're going to retire if you win it again, Stuart. Yeah, I think at the end of this season I'll be calling it a day after 21 years. So uh, you'd like a fourth on the Trot World title to go out with then, no doubt? It'd be very nice, but stock car racing is a funny sport. Anything can happen. Are you reasonably confident, uh, or do you think uh, the fact that you're on the front with an inexperienced driver alongside you? Well, I think that's been a bit cruel to Graham France. He's not that inexperienced. He's been racing at least six or seven years that I know of. Um, he's quite a good driver, but like you've just said, he's not, you know, he's not up to the, the big occasion, I don't think. Maybe he might do something silly, I don't know. But uh, if I can get him in that first corner, I'll be happy. I think I can win it. And you won't be looking in your mirror looking for people like Frankie Wayman and uh, Nigel Wharton too often? I shouldn't think I'd have to look in my mirror because they'll be there anyway, them lads. They're, they're, quick, they're just as quick as me around here, and if they get a chance, they'll be there. Well, thoughts of uh, retirement, will you still keep your, up your interest in stock car racing, still visit the tracks and uh, do anything else in the sport, or is that it when you do retire? No, of course. I mean, you can't just cut stock cars off completely. Um, I shan't be racing next year. I might do one or two odd appearances in other people's cars if I get offered, but I'm certainly not going out at it full time like I have been doing, you know. Um, it's time to call it a day, really. Uh, I've had 20 years at the job, and it'd be nice to finish at the top. So the uh, crowd beginning to get really excited, cheering for their own particular favourite, the 33rd Formula One Stock Car World Final. The ninth time it's been held here at Coventry. And Stuart Smith has won on both the last two occasions it's been raced here at Coventry. And there he is. He's suggested that it may be his last Formula One World Final. to his fans. Frankie Wayman, the national points champion. We spoke to Frankie as well a little earlier on. Frankie, you had the distinction of uh, rolling your car last year in the World Final at Bradford. You're hoping not to do that tonight. No, I hope not to do that tonight. I hope somebody else does, though, but not me. I don't suppose you'd mention any names who... Uh... Not particularly. Well, the third row of the grid, that's uh, not a bad start, is it, round Coventry? Uh, it depends on the start. If I'm getting a start, it should be a good start, but we'll have to see. Now, of course, the man they all talk about is on the front row, Stuart Smith. He might just be gone before everybody else sees the green flag. So long as he don't get too far ahead on first two laps, I think I can catch him. Well, the car's looking uh, smart again tonight, and uh, it's a world final. What is it uh, for you? Twelfth world final, I think? I don't know. I think it'll be more than that. More than 12 world finals. And, uh, of course, you won the title in 79. I won in 79. The last one I missed, I think, would be about 75. Uh, here, I think it was. So you've got a record stretching back a few years and uh, you're looking to make it uh, gold and silver tonight? Yes, I think we can do it. And there's the young man who's travelled all, all the way around the world from New Zealand to compete in this world final. Only his uh, second race in this country, as he said earlier on tonight when we spoke to him in the pits. One of the Dutchmen there with the name Black Beauty on his car and that's uh, Wilhelm Boschma from an island in Holland his first time in a Briscoe Formula One World Final. And there's another of the Dutchmen that we spoke to uh, him a little earlier, smiling bumpy Rian Richards. Rian, how many times is it you've raced in Britain now? 
that is uh, last year was the last time I raced here that is, uh, in Bradford and before nearly every year, two times in a year. I've been here once, uh, four or five years ago. I did every year, three weeks, every meeting. And you obviously enjoy your racing in this country. Yeah, it's a little bit rougher than in Holland. It's uh, <laughs> very nice. <laughs> Especially the tight shale tracks, of course. You don't get so many tight shale tracks like Coventry in Holland, do you? No, we don't have any shale tracks in Holland. All, all our tracks are tarmac. They're not uh, shale tracks. And uh, you're down the grid on, I think it's uh, row eight, is it tonight? I've been in uh, row eight, yes. Uh, how do you think your chances are from row eight? 50-50. Uh, yeah, no, uh, how do you spell that in English? Uh, the chances are for everybody the same, but down the four, in the first row, the chances are better. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of the British drivers, which one do you think is the one to beat? Uh, Schmitty. Stuart, Stuart Smith. Smith. Yeah. I think so, and he's very good, and special on this track. I see him race his, uh, before he on this track, and he's very good. Special on shale. Yeah. He's and the uh, man to beat. Of <laughs> the Dutch drivers, if uh, you weren't going to get in the top three, which of the Dutch drivers do you think would? Uh, Freetown, Walters, yeah. That's car number eight? Car number eight, yes. Yeah, and Freetown recently he's won the... He's on uh, uh, four row. On row four? Row so, four, yeah, yeah. And he recently won the long track championship at uh, Yeah, he won the last Barlow. meeting, yes, and Barlow yeah, the long one, so yeah, yeah. And the young man who's uh, got a big future in front of him in stock car racing could be the one to replace Stuart Smith, they say, when Stuart goes. We spoke to Nigel Wharton a little earlier on. The mechanics begin to leave the track. Knowing that their driver is strapped in, the mechanics have done all they can. So, uh, as they make their way back to the pits, leaving their driver strapped in his car. And that's a view from the back end of the grid. The two drivers on the back there, Arthur Gibson, 357, and Dave Tapping, 412. Both making their world final debut tonight. Arthur from the north, Yorkshire, and Dave Tapping from Leicestershire. And uh, on the far side of the 511 Peter Hawk car is Dan Clark, 203. He was second in the world final here not so long ago. And we spoke to Dan a little earlier on this evening. Not long to go now then. Uh, the board has just been shown to the drivers. Two minutes to go before the world final starts. The crowd settling down with anticipation. And that's a man who could spring a surprise, they say, from Holland... Friedhelm Walters, car number eight. Friedhelm, we talked to earlier tonight. Friedhelm, you're on row four of the grid tonight, so you think that's a good chance? Yes, that's po maybe possible a good chance. We can do no uh, praxis at the moment, and it's not easy to get uh, the good tyres on the car. That's a problem, but uh, we're trying. So yes, uh, tyre problems, I suppose. Previous World Finals, you've been out for practice laps and set the tyres up, etc., but not tonight. So it's pure guesswork. Uh, yes, we must uh, try it, and uh, when it's good, we are lucky with it, but now at the moment, we don't know what type of tiles we u must use. Well, recently you won the World Long Track Championship at Barlow in your own country. Uh, yeah. It would be nice to win the double and win this one tonight, wouldn't it? Uh, I don't think that is possible. Smith is too fast, much too fast. Stuart Smith's the one you think uh, will take some catching? Yes, he has the most chance. He's a perfect driver. I think it's the best driver over here. Yes. Uh, so, realistically, what do you think uh, place on the final placings would be for you? I don't know. We must wait. After maybe 9 o'clock, we know what's happened. <laughs> when you see how the tyres go? Yeah. And on the far side of Freedown Welters, car number eight, another New Zealander, Russell Joblin. That car specially built by him and his crew since they arrived in this country just a few weeks ago. 36, part of the father and son team. That's Rod Folding, the dad, in 36. Nigel Wharton alongside him. We've already seen John Tolson from the northeast of England in 286. And on the far side of him, John Wright in 128. Surprise qualifier, John Wright, just passed his 21st birthday. Desperate for a sponsor to keep his interest in Formula One stock car racing. An ex-Formula Two racer there, Peter Hall in 511. He comes from the north of England. And moving on down the grid. Graham Blundell, star grade driver, 156. Graham from 
Preston in his fifth world final tonight. And a former the Formula Two world champion 1967, Andy Webb in 247 there, trying to add the Formula One world title to his list. Richard Ainsworth from Cumbria in 354, and alongside him, Dave Beresford in 260. A tenth world final for Dave Beresford. Further on down the grid, the Mo Smith in 51 from Avery in Essex. Behind Mo Smith, the back end of the grid, we see 357, Arthur Gibson, 412, Dave Tapping. A couple of uh, overseas drivers just in front of them there, Wilhelm Boschma and Koos Peters, both uh, making their world final debut. And there they are. That's uh, Boschma in one on the inside and Peters on the outside in car number 73. All the Dutch drivers bring their own cars over to Britain to race. Uh, they're more experienced on long tarmac tracks, but they'll be giving it a go when the green flag goes down, and it won't be too long before that happens because they are now beginning to roll the 1986 Motorquip Formula One World Final. So the crowd settle down, and as the uh, green flag goes down, There'll be a roar of engines and a roar from the crowd, and those are the two men on the front row. The surprise qualifier, Graham France, in 216. Graham from Liversedge in West Yorkshire, and alongside him, the defending title holder, Stuart Smith from Rochdale, says it's his last world final. He's trying to make it four in a row tonight, and that's something that's never been done before. The cars glistening under the lights. The mechanics and crews have spent many hours polishing them, shining them for the big occasion. Crowd choosing their favourite driver, wishing him well. The stands packed, the tickets for the seating in the grandstand sold out many, many weeks ago. And there on the rostrum, uh, taking charge of his fourth world final, Brian Beat. One of the most experienced starters in the country. And Brian's going to be the man and, uh, in control in just a moment. It looks as though it's going to be a first time start. That's it. Away they go. The hopes and dreams of all the months are now in action. And on that first turn, some of them going out wide there. Dave Miller in 304 from the second row going out wide. There's someone in trouble on the infield, looked like Peter Hall in 511. And Stuart Smith said he would try to break away, and it looks as though he has done. Car number one, Stuart Smith, the defending title holder, leads it around the fifth turn. Graham France going out wide in 216, and there's Frankie Wayman moving through in 212 into third place. But it's Smith, the leader, in number one. The man with the gold roof who's uh, defending his world title leads. John Wright has already been lapped in 128. Frankie Wayman through into third place in 212 from the third row of the grid. It's still France in second in 216, but there's Wayman up to third in 212. Behind him, Nigel Wharton fourth in 422. So three of the top four of the drivers, everyone expected to be battling out front, and the marker tie there, catching Graham France in 216, and that lets Frankie Wayman through in 212. So Wayman through to second place now, the 212 car with the silver roof, the national points champion. Chasing after Stuart Smith, who's just lapped back row starter Dave Tapping, car 412. So Smith comes through onto the home straight again in number one. And it looks as though he's beginning to build a lead. That's uh, Dave Tapping, who's a lap down behind him. And John Wright spins just in front of the leader there. But the leader, Stuart Smith, saw it coming. Moves away. That's the second and third place cars. 2-1-2 two, two, Wayman. 4-2-2 two, two, Wharton. They are second and third. And a lot of traffic there down amongst the back markers. Big raid, Brian Branson in his first world. 2-5-4. Trying to live with some of the big names. New Zealander Graham Barr catching a tie there in the green car number 38. And Smith is in amongst the traffic now and finding the going a slow, just a little bit car number one. All those back markers to get through. There he is, going down the straight. Oh, and somebody getting airborne there. That was uh, one of the Dutchmen, Wilhelm Boschman, car number one. Got airborne. In fact, he's blown a front tyre, so his uh, world title dreams have ended. He'll be pulling up. That's the leader, Stuart Smith, number one. Threading his way through the back markers. We wait for second and third. There's second, 2-1-2, Frankie Wayman. 
there's Wharton in 4.22 and uh, Russell Joblin's gone, car number 8, the New Zealander. Joblin in trouble there, front axle gone. And Stuart Smith's in trouble, Smith has gone. The world champion in trouble there in number 1. He's rejoining on the back straight and the uh, noise on the terraces reaches maximum level. With Stuart Smith in all sorts of trouble in car number 1. And that puts Frankie Wayman in the lead in 2-1-2. So Wayman, the new leader. Oh, Wayman's gone. He's been taken out by that marker. Wayman goes to the fence in a shower of sparks. And it's put Nigel Wharton in the lead, unless Wharton got tangled out. And he did. And Wharton went out with him in 4.22. So Wharton's gone, and Wayman's gone, and Smith has gone. They're all in trouble. And it uh, looks as though it's Peter Fording who's taken over the lead position in car number 33 from the second row of the grid. And there's Folding going down the home straight towards the pits turn. So Folding, the new leader, 33. And who's down behind him in second place? It's number eight, Fridan Welters from Holland. Could there be a major shock on the cards? It's Folding, the leader, 33. Welters second in car number eight. I don't remember seeing Welters go out, so I'm assuming he's running second there. Behind him, Mick Noden in 306, and then Dave Miller in 304, and Dan Clark 203. So that looks like the top placings, but it's Peter Folding, car number 33, who leads. He was back in fourth place when the leaders started hitting trouble. Wayman and Wharton must have been delighted to see Smith go out in front of them, but then they too went out. And that's the leader, 33, Peter Folding. Second, it couldn't be number eight, Fred Al Walters. Down the back straight they go, and there's Stuart Smith, number one, still motoring, but down the places now. He didn't seem to be out for too long. He could be up into the top six. Peter Folding down on the bend once again. And the traffic beginning to thin out. The Indian Jack is out. We're into the second half of the 1986 Motor Quick Formula One World Final. And that's the leader, young Peter Folding from Rotherham in Yorkshire. Car number 33. The 73, one of the Dutchman Kiz Peter's gone out there. Parked up by the fence gap in the traffic so that he can rejoin the action. Folding the leader goes through. Second, third and fourth there, signalled by the start marshal, Brian Bede, as they went through. And Dave Miller, 304, McNoden, 306, battling through the field. And there's Sir the lead car going through. Welters uh, running next to that Noden. And then behind him is... Uh, Dave Mellon, it looks as though Stuart Smith in number one is back into the placings. So Dave Mellon gets the better of Nick Noden. Mellon in 3.04 there, and Noden goes wide on that bend. Folding still leads in 33. And Graham Barr, the New Zealander, 38, onto the infield with a buckled back wheel and a flat back tyre, so his uh, championship votes have gone. As they come through on the home straights, Mr. Starter signals to them. It's 33, Peter Folding the leader. Red Elm Belters in second place in car number eight. 3.04, Dave Miller next. But there's Welters trying desperately to get uh, to catch the leader. Welters in car number eight. In amongst the back markers there, Dave Perrisford 260 and Andy Webb 247. Walking the progress of second place driver and Ridan Walters in number eight. That's third place Dave Mello going through and a tackle behind him and that gives Stuart Smith the chance to gain a bit of ground. McNoden goes out in 306, he was fourth. And it looks as though Stuart Smith is back into fourth place despite the problems earlier on. So Smith motoring, there's something dangling from the back of his car there, the number one car, but he's up into the fourth place and chasing the top three. And we're moving into the closing stages and Peter Folding is still leading in 33. A young man who's going to be a shock world champion if he can get through the closing stages and the traffic in front of him. Dutchman Peter Walter still working hard trying to get with him. Folding drifts his car around that turn, into the back, straight he goes, 33, Peter Folding. 
But there's Dave Beresford still holding up the progress of Prinan Welters. Beresford, we believe, is a lap down on the charts in the 260 car. Welters in car number eight, trying desperately to get past him. And he's coming under pressure now from third place Dave Muller. That's Welters in number eight. And close behind him is Muller in 304 there. And Muller's helping Welters along with a bumper going in. Round the turn they go again. That's 33, the leader. And we're on the last lap, and Walters has gone. And Mella put him deep into the fence there. And that's 33, Peter Foley on his last lap and heading for the World Championship. The checker flag's about to go down, and Peter Foley has won it. And who's going to come home second? It could be Stuart Smith, because Mella and Walters tackled out. We're looking back down track, and in fact, Mella has finished second, and Stuart Smith third. Behind them comes Dan Clark. Graham France and Frankie Wayman cross the line. And what a shot with Peter Folding, car number 33, winning the world title. Only his second world championship race. His best previous place was sixth last year at Bradford. That was his world final debut, Peter Folding. And his dad's going to be mighty pleased. His dad has been racing Formula One stock cars for 25 years. Rod Folding, driver of number 36. And Rod himself was in this race, but so uh, we didn't see him in the hunt for the chase, for the title. So it's a surprise winner in the shape of Peter Folding. 33. Second place went to Dave Muller in 3.04. Third place went to Stuart Smith in number one. And sections of the crowd looking quite stunned with that result, with all the big names on the grid, although Peter Fording starting on the second row. He was perhaps not the most fancy of the drivers up front. And he's going to get out of that car and climb out of the roof. Here he is, the young man who has won the 1986 Motor Quick Formula One world title. The greatest day of his young life, just uh, 21 years of age. Driver who learnt his track craft in mini stocks racing for the under 16s. And dad has always said that one day he'll have to take a back seat to son Peter. Well, that day looks as though it's here because uh, son Peter is now the Formula One world champion. In a race that had plenty of action around the circuit. Stuart Smith going out when he was in contention. And then Wayman and Wharton going out. And of course, Friedan Welters online for the best ever placing by an overseas driver. But uh, Dave Mello deposited him in the fence on the last lap. Mello himself moving up to second place. So we spare a thought for Friedan Welters, who said earlier on to us tonight that if he got the tyres right, he'd go well. He must have got them right. And there's Fred Elm. So uh, his car doesn't look as though it's damaged, but it cost him a place in the top three and a place on the rostrum, which would have been very nice. And it looks as though Stuart Smith, in fact, has got a flat tyre on the back of that car. But uh, he appeared to finish in third place. And there you are. Someone in Peter Folding's crew must have been very confident. And that looks like his mum. Uh, there it is indeed. That's Pete Folding's mum giving him a kiss. So, uh, Dad, as a Formula One driver, not going to get much fuss in the folding household tonight. The number one, and that says it all. Well, it looks as though Mum's won the world uh, title herself down there. That's one of Pete's mechanics. Pete Folding, he can't believe it. Presentations will be made shortly when they can gather the first three together. And that's one of uh, Stuart Smith's mechanics there in the uh, red jacket coming across to congratulate Pete Folding. And uh, the race really decided in the closing stages as uh, Dad Rod Young Peter receiving the congratulations of many of his fans down on the terraces. 
He probably can't believe it. And there it is, the World Championship trophy that they first raced for in 1960. 26 years old, that trophy. And the names engraved around the bottom read like a who's who of Formula One stock car racing. Big bottle of champagne there that's going to uh, liven up the folding transporter on the uh, way home. So the man who finished third, his uh, world title has gone. He'll race the rest of the season with a red roof on his car. No longer the gold roof holder. Stuart Smith, car number one. Went out round right about the halfway stage when he was leading and looking set for a fourth successive victory. But it's not to be. If he's going to end his career this year, then he uh, ends it with the knowledge that he's equaled the record of Dave Chisholm. Three on the truck, but not beaten it. But there he is, Stuart Smith, number one. Third place in tonight's Formula One World Final. And the man who uh, fought his way through, shunting out Fridan Walters from Holland on the last bend to grab second place. They, they call him the big man, comes from Ashbourne, Derbyshire. It's Dave Muller, the driver of car 304, world champion himself back in 1978. And racing tonight in his ninth world final. Finishing runner-up there. Bottle of champagne for him as well. And uh, looking well pleased with life. Stuart Smith looking just a little bit thoughtful. Smiles to some fans on the terraces now. 15th world final tonight for Stuart, and there he is. Stuart takes a back seat, that's number one, Peter Folding, the youngster from Brinsworth, near Rotherham in South Yorkshire. And I wonder uh, just how long his crew have had that T-shirt ready for him. Touch of the Daily Thompsons, in fact, as he has his own T-shirt. The motor quick Formula One world champion 1986. 33, Peter Folding. Oh, down here uh, on track we've got Peter Folding uh, wearing the number one T-shirt. Peter, you must be delighted. Can't believe it. It's like a dream come true. Tell us, how long have they had that T-shirt waiting? Well, I just got it off one of the lads. <laughs> did, giving it me. did you know they got it waiting for you? No, he's, he's had it ages. It was his own T-shirt and I decided I'd have that now. Well, you are number one now, and uh, Stuart gloriously uh, accepted that you are the new world champion. Yeah, I think he's been the maestro for a long time now, and I think now it's my turn to take over from him. Well, just before we have another word, Rodney, we've got uh, Mum Doreen down here. We saw you getting excited as he crossed the line, but you can't believe it. Oh, absolutely fantastic. I know my husband is letting people see Peter take all the glory, but in actual fact, if it wasn't for Rodney, and a lot of other good people, but particularly Rodney, that husband of mine, absolutely fantastic. He's been trying now for 24 years, and for some reason or other, it's eluded him. But his son has made that dream come true. In fact, for all of us, for his two sisters as well, Susan and Jill, absolutely brilliant. Absolutely. I'm sorry Stuart's retiring, but he's a, bring, a great ambassador to the sport, and I think everybody owes him a lot. Well, I bet uh, Rod is delighted as much as if he'd won it himself. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, let's have a look at the uh, trophy. That's the one that all the fuss has been about. Peter, as the race was going on, and you must have saw them getting away from you at that one stage early on, did you think, well, it looked like a place tonight? Yeah, I thought I dropped back to about fifth. I just couldn't get going at the beginning. I had a lot of trouble and that. And then I settled down in about fifth spot, and uh, Smithy, Smithy went out, and then there were a pile up on top bend, and I just thought I took my chance and hit a few into the top bend, and I got through. Oh, did you know it was uh, Walters who was chasing you and getting uh, fairly close at one stage? Yeah, well, I could see him in my mirror, but as I passed Dave Beresford, who was an odd man to pass by, I just caught him at right time, and I got past him, and Freedom was struggling to get past him. So uh, you knew it was uh, in the bag then in the closing stages as long as you did nothing silly? No, all right. I took my time. After uh, I pulled off a straight on him, I, uh, I hung off a little bit and I weren't pushing it as hard. Well, I know you're going off to enjoy the champagne now. It'll be a celebration party tonight, no doubt, for the foldings. <laughs> well, uh, all the best. Many congratulations, Peter, and good luck in your year as world champion. Thank you. So the full result of the Motorquip Formula One Stock Car World Final 1986. 33, Peter Folding the winner, Dave Meller second in 304, and the ex-world champion number one, Stuart Smith, was third.
The rest of the places, Dan Clark was fourth in 2.03. Fifth place, the best by an overseas driver, that was H15, Rian Richards from Holland. In sixth place, it was 2.16, Graham France. Seventh place went to 2.12, Frankie Wainman. And eighth was 36, Rod Folding, father of the new world champion. Ninth place went to Mo Smith in 51. Tenth was 2.86, John Tolson. In 11th place, it was Richard Ainsworth in 3.54. And 12th was the 260 car of Dave Beresford.